Hi everyone. Um, what I'm going to talk about uh, is hypothermia, uh, hypothermia symptoms. Um, there's a real good article here, and I'm going to uh, uh, put the link down below in the description. And uh, this is one I found on the net, and it sort of goes into um, it, it sort of lays out for you. Uh, the article is, is much better than I can uh, explain it, right? Um, uh, I know how to prevent hypothermia, I know what to look for and everything like that, but, um, you know, if I went on explaining it, it would, you know, I'd be leaving stuff out. But anyway, you know, the signs that can be observed by other people, slowing of pace, drowsiness, fatigue, stumbling, thickness of speech, amnesia, irrationally poor judgment, hallucinations, loss of perceptual contact with the environment, uh, blueness of the skin, the dilation of the uh, enlargement of the pupils, uh, decreased heart and respiration rate, and stupor. Um, noticed by the victim, fatigue, drowsiness, exhaustion, unwillingness to go on, feeling deep cold or numbness, poor coordination, stumbling. Uh, it the article also goes on uh, immediate help if the following are present uh, prevention, treatment, and um, it's a pretty compact little unit here, right? I mean, you could print it off and put it on a card. Uh, you know, it you know talks about uh, you know how to recognize it and what to do. And I thought you guys might be interested in it. I mean, it's an important hypothermia can kill you in 40 minutes. Um, they had, yeah, I remember doing the, the training, right? And I, I, I well, I, I remember we were in the field one time, and we were doing anti ambush drills. And anti ambush drills are real simple. It's like you're going along. Uh, no, anti contact drills, not the anti ambush drills. That, that was another time but we're doing the anti-contact drill so you're you're on a reconnaissance and uh you come up against the enemy they see you what do you do well the ideal thing is you run 50 meters change direction run 50 meters change and so on and so forth until you get away from them because you're on reconnaissance you're not on a fighting patrol you're on reconnaissance and you have to break contact well what had happened was is that uh, the, it was in the fall. Uh, I, I, it was early November, and the morning was really great. I mean, it was one of these mornings that was just, uh, you know, a, a warm November morning. Uh, along about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock that afternoon, we uh, we got a heavy snow flurry. Now, when I talk about a heavy snow flurry, we got about a half an inch of snow down. All afternoon, we're doing the anti-contact uh, anti drills, and, you know, we have to go to ground. We get, you know, our, our combat clothing got soaked. Um, around about 4 o'clock, the temperature started to drop. It went from, like, just below zero down to about uh, minus 10 Celsius. And the wind came up. Everybody started to freaking go hypothermic. So basically, we were in an emergency situation. So uh, we, f we we got into a sheltered area, and we lit big fires to dry out. And then we marched back uh, because uh, it was recognized by the, uh, the lieutenant that we were in trouble. Or I, I don't know if it was the lieutenant or the sergeant, but uh, I suspect it was the sergeant because he was a pretty experienced, crusty old Korean War vet. And uh, he, uh, but anyway, we we built a couple of big fires, and we got sort of got in the middle of it, dried out, and uh, didn't take us long to warm up. And we had warm drinks. We made up. Uh, warm drinks and everything like that, but I, I, I'm going to tell you, it, it's a nasty experience. Uh, uh, I remember one time we we had to run I don't know how many K's, and we were in full winter kit, and 
we just got soaked. Uh, uh, we were absolutely soaked. And when we got back to the battalion area, uh, we stopped running. It got cold. It got serious really quickly. Um, you know, and, th and that was in like minus 15, minus 20. Uh, and uh, so that became a serious situation because everything we had was soaked. Uh, on another occasion, uh, I was I took my nephew on an extreme hike, and it had rained overnight, and we were moving and we were going through the bush. <laughs> And everything was wet. But the temperature, like, it was in September, I believe. And the temperature was, it was above freezing. But I could feel the, you know, the heat being sucked out of us. So, basically, we, all we had were the clothes on our back, our rain gear. Like I said, it was an extreme hike. Uh, and, uh, and our rain gear. And so I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to we're going to stop. We're going to build a fire, build a shelter. We're going to get out of these wet clothes, put on our rain gear. Even though the rain gear was very thin, it we were dry underneath it because the rain gear was dry because it hadn't been raining. So we put on the rain pants, the rain jacket, and we were a bit chilly. But we had the fire going, and we were able to dry our clothes and then put them back on. But it was that situation where you had to get out of the wet clothes. So, uh, hypothermia is very serious. Like, it's the only thing, like, uh, uh, it's the thing that I fear most. And hypothermia or slash exposure um, is, the, is the item that kills most people when they're in a bad situation. Another example in the um, for you guys who out there who've read Bravo Two Zero, it's about an SAS unit in the Gulf War, the first Gulf War, and they got hypothermia. And I mean, here's some of the here's some of the most highly trained troops in the world, and they got hypothermia, and it screwed them up. And um, you know, as I was reading the book, I mean. If they had had a sheet of plastic with them to keep the snow off them, they wouldn't have got hypothermia. And uh, the mission might have went a little different. Um, but uh, if you haven't read Bravo 2-0, I recommend it. It's got a very good uh, uh, section there where they're talking about uh, when they got snowed on. They didn't realize that it snowed in Iraq too, right? You know, uh, that they can have wet snow and, and, and cold weather. Uh, you know, again, it's like best laid plans of mice and men, you know what I mean? You never know what's going to happen. Um, but, uh, you know, hypothermia is the one thing that, 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 that scares the hell out of them. Uh, because you can be dead in 40 minutes. Or you can go into a stupor in 40 minutes and then you're dead in an hour. You'll just go to sleep. It's I, it's a good way to go, but uh, uh, hypothermia is one of the most important things to know how to how to f stave off and how to prevent, right? Because um, you know the sacred order, you know, uh, sacred order of the Apache is uh, shelter, water, food, right? Shelter, fire, right? Those two go together. Water, food. Um, it, it, you know, if you can get under shelter, right, you can protect yourself. The fire helps. Water's even better, and food is great too. But uh, 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 shelter and fire go together. Every survival manual I've ever read, every survival course I've ever been on, it always starts with the shelter and the fire. The ability to put up a shelter and a fire. Get out of the bad weather. To get that wetness off you. Because hypothermia will take you out like in 40 minutes. There's a 
<coughs> the Canadian military has done. They have a testing center, and they've done extensive testing with hypothermia, and uh, you know, and, and and that's why I, I highly recommend the Canadian uh, 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 winter warfare gear. I mean, I mean, we. This is us. You know, I'm watching this stuff in Europe right now. And Europeans are scrambling. I mean, it was like, uh, you know, the, the weather temperatures are pretty bad, but I mean, the, they're typical Canadian winter temperatures. Uh, and typical northern United States, you know, like in Montana and, and, and places like that. I mean, pff, minus 20, minus 30, uh, that happens all the time. They lose 250 people. 300 people have died over there, and it's because they really, you know, they, they really don't know, because they've had such a moderate temperatures over the years, they don't know how to deal with the extreme stuff when it does come, and it does come once in a while, all right, I don't know if it's a, uh, you know, why this stuff has shown up, uh, whether it's the Gulf Stream is slowing down, or is they're, they're saying it's the lack of ice up in the Arctic, uh, that doesn't make sense to me, though. Gulf Stream slowing down makes more sense, you know, uh, because we've had an ex exceptionally warm winter here. Today's kind of cold. Uh, you know, it's minus six Celsius here, but we've got a strong wind. So, um, you know, when I go, out, I'm gonna go out in the wood, work in the woods a little while, and uh, you know, I'll dress pretty warm for that. If I can find out where the dog put my toque. Oh, she's sleeping on it, is she? Good. Uh, so it'll be, yeah, it'll be nice and warm for me. But, um, no, anyway, check out this article on hypothermia. Hypothermia is the, uh, it's, it's a big killer. It really is. Uh, yeah, that's the one that gets everybody, uh, when you're, you're out there, uh, and, and even guys who know their stuff, like uh, when that Canadian uh, transport plane went down up north, uh, you know, some of them survived, but the other ones succumbed to hypothermia because it was minus 35, minus 40. Uh, so you've got to you've got to know a little bit about hypothermia, and, and I, I think this is a good article. Anyway, till the next time.